Right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for today's um, uh, virtual brown bag. We are very excited to have Anissa Budeman here um, from the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic at Child and Family Services. Uh, so before I pass it uh, over to Anissa, uh, and the virtual mic at least over, um, just a little bit of housekeeping, as you, I'm sure you can tell, we are on Zoom webinar format. So um, your cameras and microphones are automatically turned off and muted, but we do encourage interaction. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop those into the chat box or the q and I'm sure there will be time at the end for any questions um, that do come up uh, for Anissa to address. But know that you do have those options available to you. It is being recorded today as well. So in that follow-up email, you will be getting a link to today. Um, and yeah, I feel like I'm forgetting something with the, with the Zoom housekeeping, but if I remember it, I will drop it in the chat. Um, so without further ado, I will go ahead and pass it over to Anissa. And uh, hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, I'm so excited to share a little bit more about the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic at Child and Family Service. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, hopefully you guys can see it. Um, if you don't, just let me know. Um, so just to um, first of all, address our very long name, the Stephen A. Cohen Military Family Clinic at Child and Family Service. Um, so our mental health clinic um, does run under two parent organizations. So we are the 17th out of 21 clinics nationwide under the Cohen Veterans Network um, umbrella. Um, and locally, we're partnered with Child and Family Service, um, which might be familiar to you folks. It's the longest, non, uh, the oldest nonprofit um, in Hawaii. It's been around for about 123 years, um, and we are um, under one of um, the CFS programs. Um, so I wanted to take you on a quick virtual tour of our clinic. Um, before we get into um, more information about the services that um, the clinic provides. Um, so we are located in Mililani um, on the Malka side. Um, we're right across the Longs um, and um, where Liberty Dialysis is. Um, so if you're familiar and if you're ever in the area, feel free to reach out to me and I'd be happy to give you a tour in person as well. Um, so we have um, up here our um, three waiting areas. Um, this first part is um, these first two um, pictures on top are um, at our lobby. Um, so all of our clinics across the network, um, they all have a similar um, furniture style, similar um, coloring scheme. Um, but the way that we individualize ourselves is through the artwork. As you can see up here, we have island inspired artwork to reflect that we're in Hawaii. We also have other military artwork around the clinic as well, which um, unfortunately was not captured in the picture. But if you do ever come in for an in person, I will definitely show you those. Um, and we also have this additional extension of the waiting area, which is called our private, um, our quiet room. So it's a more private area where clients can request to have a more private um, um, a setting when they're waiting for their clinician, um, or if they've had a particularly heavy session, um, they can use the space to decompress. On the right side, we have um, um, what um, our typical clinician's office looks like. All of our clinician's office um, also follows that kind of same scheme, same decor. Um, and that's uh, again, across um, all the clinics across the nation, um, all of the clinician's offices are also equipped with a TV so that the clinicians can do collaborative note-taking with their clients. Um, and we also use measurement-based care at every session, um, assessments that are relevant to the client's <clears throat> needs um, so that the client can see, the clinician can project onto the screen um, the progress that the client has gone through um, in the targeted treatment model that um, they follow um, when they receive services at the clinic. <clears throat> Oh, sorry, there we go. Um, these two um, rooms are really important um, for the community partners that we work with. Um, the community room, uh, which hosts up to 25 people and also has a projector, is available for community partners um, to use free of charge. Um, just um, You guys can just let me know, um, and I'd be happy to schedule um, space to do a training um, or a meeting or anything up in Mililani. Feel free to let me know, and I'd be happy to schedule that for you. Um, and this is actually where we're going to be having the um, in person with Amanda for the Suicide Prevention Foundation course um, in September. Um, and we also have our conference room below. Um, it also has teleconference capabilities um, equipment in there, and that's also available um, to be used by um, any community partner as well. 
um, we have two additional therapy rooms available. Um, we have our family therapy room, which is also used as a small groups room, and also our playroom, um, where all of our clinicians are able to uh, use the um, space for play therapy or even for family therapy um, when they want to kind of focus more on the, on the child. Our clinic director, Janet Covington, is such an advocate for play therapy. Um, so she really has a way of how she would like to, uh, how she likes to set up the toys so that the kids, it's so accessible for the kids to just grab whatever they, um, whatever they engage with um, so that they can foster that connection with the clinician during um, therapy. Um, now going into more history about um, the founder of CBN, One Veterans Network, Mr. Cohen. He founded the um, organization back in 2016 out of a personal um, love for his son. His son was um, enlisted in the Marine, with the Marine Corps. He deployed to Afghanistan. And when he came back, he told his dad um, that he really needed to focus his philanthropy efforts on providing mental health services that are accessible um, for veterans and their family members, because sometimes a lot of the services that are available um, uh, certain veterans or certain um, family members aren't eligible to access. Um, so that's how the um, clinic started. It started off as five clinics and now six years later, um, we're at 21 and hope to be uh, and are aiming to have 25 clinics by the end of this year. Um, our mission is always to fill in gaps. So to provide um, low to no cost um, accessible mental health um, mental health care that's high quality. Um, we provide services um, for individual, for adult and child, child ages five up. We provide couples counseling. I notice I didn't say marriage counseling. Um, so couples counseling, family counseling, and group counseling for post 9-11 veterans, service members of all branches to include guard and reserve, and anybody that veteran or service member identifies as a family member. So especially in Hawaii, we have Hanai family, they're also eligible to receive uh, mental health services at our clinic. To kind of uh, do a more deep dive into the um, clientele that we serve, we identify veterans as, uh, we define veterans as anybody who has served at least one day in the military. So that's regardless of discharge status and also regardless of role while in uniform. And that also extends to the eligibility of the family members as well. For um, National Guard and Reserves, if you're familiar, <clears throat> that we do have um, our traditional guardsmen and traditional reservists, and sometimes they're on order. So um, at any at any point in their career for guard and reservists, they're always eligible for services at our clinic and also for their family members as well. Um, we do have instances where we need a TRICARE or a mental, uh, sorry, military treatment facility referral for um, service members. Um, and that's only if it's the active duty service member wanting to do individual counseling, or if it's a dual active duty couple. The reason is, since we are a nonprofit um, and we're not affiliated with any military bases or the VA, we don't do fit for duty. So we are a community provider and we need that MTF referral to be able to communicate with the provider. Uh, we never communicate with their command. It's just only to um, communicate with TRICARE or their provider. <clears throat> but if we have any um, service, active duty service members wanting to do couples counseling with um, a partner or a spouse, and their partner or spouse is a civilian, um, we don't need a referral. Um, in any instance that um, the active duty service member is engaging in um, therapy um, that uh, has dependents um, included in that, we don't need a referral for that. Um, a snapshot of the clients that we've served in the past six years, um, we've seen more than 32,000 clients network wide. 53% of those are veterans um, and uh, the rest are um, dependents. And But our Hawaii clinic is a little bit unique where we actually see more family members and kids um, as opposed to veterans because um, the whole, in Hawaii, um, the gap is more for the services for the family members and the kids. Um, but for uh, out of the 53% of veterans, 29 of those have identified as female veterans. And that is two times, almost two times the female uh, veteran population in the US. Um, and out of that 53%, 10% of them have identified as veterans um, that were discharged with other than honorable status.
Um, these are some of the behavioral health issues that our clinicians address. It really does range from um, helping a child um, adjust to a new uh, P adjust to a new school, adjust to a PCS, all the way to addressing higher level behavioral health problems such as PTSD. Our clinicians are um, using evidence based um, practices, um, including CBT, CBTI for insomnia, CPT, PE, and also have um, the opportunity to um, get trained um, that is uh, supported by CBN to do EMDR. Um, our clinic director also does art therapy, accelerated resolution therapy as well, um, and um, other <clears throat> EBPs um, that are accessible to our clinicians. Um, we would be able to use um, and offer that to the clients um, for their treatment plan. Um, so across the network, all of our clinicians use a targeted treatment model. So it's gonna be about eight to 12 sessions to complete a therapy program. Um, it does not mean that once they hit the 12th session, you know, they're cut off and they're done. Um, it really does depend on the client um, and their needs. Um, when they come in and they um, do the assessment with the clinician and the clinician deems that uh, maybe it works better for them to do EMDR and it does take 15 sessions, then they'll be seen for that 15 sessions. Um, upon discharge, um, they uh, are able to um, access booster sessions with the um, clinicians that they don't need to re-enroll for. They can just call in and say, I just wanted to do a check-in with my clinician, um, and they can be, um, and they can access three, up to three booster sessions after discharge. Um, but that also doesn't close the door for them. Um, if they wanted to re-enroll, say they first started out doing individual therapy, and then they wanted to do couples counseling, or they wanted to do family counseling, they can certainly re-enroll at any point. Um, they don't even have to do the booster sessions first. They can um, just request that they wanted to do a new cycle of care, um, and they would be um, re-enrolled um, in services as well. So some key pillars of CVN. So we do provide confidential care. As I mentioned earlier, we are a nonprofit clinic. So we don't, we aren't um, affiliated with any military um, bases or the VA. Although we do work with them, we accept referrals from them, um, but we don't share um, records, medical records with them. Um, even between Cohen clinics, even though we use the same um, electronic health record system, if we do have a family that's PCSing to or from Hawaii um, and they wanted to continue care at another Cohen clinic, um, they would uh, work on uh, an ROI with our case manager to have the records released to them so that they can um, have access to their records and release them as needed. Low to no cost treatment, free care without insurance. Um, uh, Mr. Cohen has been so generous um, in providing the funds for all of the clinics to get started um, and even setting up a charity fund um, to for clients um, to access. We accept all insurances um, and that's more for sustainability purposes. But if we do have any clients that come in and say they can't afford the copay or if they're you know doing individual, but then they're also, their kids are also doing individual and they have three kids and that can add up a lot for the copay. Um, they're more than welcome to disclose that to our admin staff and our admin staff would be able to help them secure that charity fund on a case by case basis to cover um, those expenses. Um, we don't ever want there to be any barrier to care, especially financial. Um, and if that's something that um, they have any um, uh, concerns with, um, we're more than happy to work with them so that they can continue to receive the care that they need. Uh, short wait times to receive care from that first point of contact that we receive from the client, um, be it through phone, uh, through email, through um, email submission, website submission. Um, we do. Um, uh, strive to get them scheduled with their assigned clinician in two weeks. Um, due to the higher demand, um, we have um, um, we have um, a little bit longer for waiting time right now, um, especially since um, our clinic is um, going through a data migration at this um, point in time from August to September. Um, just because uh, our old electronic health record was running under Explore, and that's going and that's retiring, so we're moving to a new um, electronic health record, um, and that's for all the clinics network wide. Um, but um, the way that CVN also has been supporting it in, in other ways is um, offering additional resources um, for free that I can um, share with you um, in uh, uh, upcoming slides, but also um, supporting the clinical staff. Um, that is needed to meet those needs. 
Um, so just to give you context, when we first opened in September 2020, so that was fully virtual during the lockdown, um, we were operating with two clinicians, one lead and one clinic director. And now in less than two years, um, we've grown to seven clinicians, um, one and then that and that's not including the lead and the clinic director who also carry a caseload. Um, but um, we have, um, they've also been really um, supportive in recognizing that there is a higher demand in Hawaii and we've been approved to hire two more clinicians. So hopefully we'll, we're gonna get to our ninth clinician soon. Um, military competent care. So all of the staff that is part of um, CVN, um, they are, um, uh, they all go through the VA's um, military cultural competency training so that all of um, our staff are well informed and well um, uh, recognize um, the different service branches, the culture that comes with being in the military, the lingos, um, so that we um, can really personalize the way that we provide care to um, the community that we serve. A modern facilities, a welcoming clinic environment for all, as you've seen in the pictures. Um, we really want to. Um, foster that really homey, um, cozy um, uh, environment for um, families to feel comfortable to come in. Um, and ongoing support for employment, housing, finances, and education. That's um, a unique aspect of our clinic. We do have a case manager that the clients can work with. Um, they can work with the case manager um, before they um, get assigned with a clinician. Um, during um, therapy or even after therapy as well, after discharge. Um, they can work with the um, case manager to identify any additional resources that they need um, to help them be able to focus on uh, the therapy that they are going through and also work with the case manager um, at any point. Um, so our, our case manager does have a um, intake form that is included in the um, uh, sorry, a resource assessment form that is included in the intake um, paper paperwork that we do give um, new clients. Um, and if they say they don't need any um, resources at that point, but during therapy, their clinicians identify that they could benefit from um, learning more about how to get in, how to secure employment, how to help um, secure um, a, a need any resources for food security or anything like that they can make that referral to our case manager and our case manager is able to work with them as well. Um, <clears throat> operational excellence, so data, training, CQI, standardization. So as I mentioned earlier, um, our clinicians are really using measurement-based care. Um, data is really important to CBN to make sure that um, we do, and even the clients are aware that they are, um, they, they can see the progress to getting back to better. Um, and we can make sure that, you know, no client is, um, has fell through the cracks. Everybody is going through that targeted treatment model um, to be able to best support those needs. Um, local operating partners in the community. So our local operating partner is Child and Family Service. Um, a lot of our families that we work with at the clinic um, need resources for um, their kids or um, any parenting resources. And that's where we work really closely with the Parent Line, which is another program under Child and Family Service. Um, telehealth available at all, all clinics. That's another way that we want to address um, any barriers to care. Um, we are able to provide services um, throughout the state of Hawaii, so including neighbor islands via telehealth, um, but the telehealth is also available for um, the clients at Oahu as well. So if we do have any clients that, um, you know, um, are experiencing the stigma of coming in person um, to attend a therapy session, they can always opt for telehealth as well. And the telehealth is also to be able to support them in case, you know, one day they can't make it um, in person because of a bad traffic jam or anything like that. They can always um, uh, reschedule their appointment to telehealth um, to be able to still meet their clinician. Another way that we um, address barriers is also transportation. So if it is clinically relevant that they come in clinic um, for in-person sessions and they just can't do telehealth for any reason, um, with advance notice, we can help the client um, arrange transportation to and from the clinic to be able to see their provider. Um, leadership, this slide is really talking a little bit more about um, how um, all of the staff members is really um, has a, such a personal stake in um, 
providing services to the military and veteran community because we are part of that community. We are who we serve. Um, our lead clinician is still actively current, uh, actively serving in the Air Reserves. Um, I myself, um, I'm a spouse to an Army Guardsman. Um, our clinic director was, uh, uh, is an Army um, child, uh, I'm sorry, military child and also a um, a spouse um, to a veteran as well. Um, and that also extends to the rest of our staff members. A lot of our clinicians are veterans from various branches of service. Um, so we all have such a heart and um, uh, we care for all of the, um, for the community that we serve because we are in that community as well. A snapshot of the locations that we're in across um, the US, the blue dots signify um, the newer clinics that have opened this year. Um, and this is all 21 clinics currently. And as I mentioned, um, we are um, planning to open 25 clinics by the end of this year. Um, these are the additional resources that Cohen Veterans Network has developed um, with national partners. On the left is um, an online self-paced course called Tools for Stress and Worry that was developed with Boost Our Families. Um, this course um, is um, designed to help um, individuals identify coping skills um, to be able to um, address any daily stress and worries. On the right side is a diversity training course for mental health providers that's free of charge as well and was developed with support from USAA. Um, this is kind of like a supplement to the VA um, diversity uh, cultural competency course that I mentioned earlier and but this is more addressing the subpopulations that um, are within the military um, community. Um, and it's more for the uh, mental health providers um, lens. Um, I wanted to take this time to kind of talk about the intake process. Um, so for intakes, um, you know, majority of them would be self-referrals. So um, if you do know, or if you are interested in learning more or wanting to enroll in services at our clinic, um, you can um, give us a call. Um, this is our uh, front desk phone number. You can also email us um, or also visit us on cohenveteransnetwork.org and um, click uh, the Milwaukee Clinic, and then that'll help you get connected to our front desk staff who will reach out um, to you guys um, within 24 hours. Um, once you get connected to the front desk, they'll create a profile for you, ask some demographic questions, um, ask how you're affiliated with the military, ask what kind of um, services you're interested in, um, and then schedule you um, for the initial assessment with the intake coordinator that's going to be done over the phone. So that appointment is going to be about 30 to 45 minutes. The intake coordinator is going to be asking some questions to better understand um, the client's need um, so that they can match them up with the best clinician um, for those needs, or if they if um, their needs are beyond our scope, um, we can um, do a warm handoff to the case manager. Um, say if they do need uh, long term care or more specialized care, our case manager will be able to help them connect with a resource in the community that does work with their um, insurance. Um, once um, they are uh, when, once they've done the assessment and um, they are on the wait list, they'll be sent um, paperwork to complete via DocuSign. Um, and then once their assigned clinician has availability, um, they'll be scheduled and that's when the eight to 12 sessions will start. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, once their um, cycle of care has ended, um, they will um, still have access to booster sessions um, or they can re-enroll, but they'll also get um, post-discharge follow-ups um, from our case manager as well every three, six and 12 months. Um, and we are also on um, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and we also have a YouTube channel and some of our past um, events um, have been posted on there as well. So we'd love if you um, give us a follow um, and if you have any ideas on how we can collaborate or how we can support any um, uh, events or anything that you guys have in mind, please feel free to reach out to me and I'd be happy to um, talk more with you. Um, thank you so much for um, giving me the time and the opportunity to share about the Cohen Clinic. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Awesome. <clears throat> thank you so much, Anissa. Um, yeah, so if you do have any questions, please feel free to drop it into the chat. But while we give folks a few minutes maybe to do that, I just want to say thank you so much again for um, coming and speaking about, about your clinic um, or the clinic that you were for. I, I was super excited when we 
connected and started chatting because I think it's a really awesome resource and um, I'm excited to collaborate with you in September for Suicide Prevention Month. But um, uh, what I really love hearing about everything that Leaker Clinic offers is kind of like the more broader definitions of veterans and their loved ones and how you kind of expand your services and make accommodations because we know that there are just so many barriers out there um, when it comes to seeking mental health services. So uh, I just thank you for everything that you are doing as an organization. And I, I, I did kind of maybe have a broader question. I'm not sure if it was the specific one that you can answer, but have you noticed maybe an impact on people's help seeking behaviors when they come to your clinic because of those broader definitions or the combinations yeah. that you make? Yeah, so um, I forgot to mention this earlier, but um, a lot of um, the veterans that kind of engage with us, they aren't uh, VA connected yet. Um, so one of the questions that we do ask during um, that first initial phone call with the front desk um, is we ask if they have their DD-214, um, which can um, identify if they do need um, extra help from the case manager to get connected to VA um, or if they've already been connected to the VA. So that kind of helps the case manager kind of tailor the way that she uh, works with them and knows that, you know, if they don't have their DD-214 and they're a veteran, they certainly, you know, would be, it would be, it would benefit them to be connected to the VA. So she's able to connect with them right off the bat, right when they're, um, before they even start treatment to kind of get that ball rolling. So once, um, because eight to 12 weeks can go by really quick. Um, and the paperwork that does um, come with, um, uh, getting VA connected might take a little a, a long time, so it it really benefits them to connect with us and then see what you know resources that we can help um, them get connected with. Um, and I think the way that um, it's been so accessible for people to connect um, via phone, via email, or via the website has has really helped um, people to just engage in the way that they're most comfortable with. That's so awesome. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat or the Q&A box. Um, so again, thank you so much, Anissa, for sharing all that really wonderful information. Um, a reminder to folks who were able to sign on to us today that it was recorded. So we will be posting that to our YouTube channel, sending you the link and the follow up. Um, but if you do have a moment before you head out, I will be dropping just an evaluation link in the chat. Thank you, Dr. G, for throwing our, our YouTube channel name in there. Um, if you don't mind, before you uh, continue on with your Thursday, just filling out that quick evaluation for us. It does help um, to get some feedback from the community. But uh, Anissa, do you have any kind of parting words for our group? Um, just wanted to let you know, again, since um, you just learned about our clinic, uh, we are going through a data migration period starting our early August until um, mid-September, so we won't be taking any new clients at that point, um, so because the clinicians are going through that training, um, their uh, <clears throat> clinical um, caseload is going to be reduced to half, but once we've reached that mid-September point, we're going to be resuming back to normal um, operating um, processes. And hopefully we'll get our eighth and ninth clinician soon so that we'll be able to um, see more clients and meet those demands. Um, and something exciting that's coming um, in October is we're going to be able to offer more groups once we've migrated to the new EHR system so that we can um, broaden our access to care um, for the people on the wait list, say, you know, if they need help with certain um, behavioral health problems, we're going to um, strive to get a group um, for, uh, you know, a certain age range or a certain um, behavior health problem and then get them together so that they can get um, access to care a little bit sooner. That's great. Thank you so much, Anissa. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. I hope you have a great rest of your Thursday and great rest of your week. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>